In The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, the player is often met with horrors and challenges in realms that are beyond their wildest beliefs. The Daedric Plains of Oblivion themselves are evil hellscapes that serve as a reminder to the mortals of Nern what these gods are capable of. Even in the lands of Tamriel itself does the player see sinister and evil happenings all the time. However, what about a place where most mortals feel at ease and perhaps even in control the most? In places like our dreams, we are not always safe and sound. Most people are able to conjure or just simply experience wicked and twisted events that leave them in a state of panic. In today's video, the topic for discussion involves an unstudied realm in which those who sleep may visit frequently. It also spawns the debate of what happens when you die in your dreams, told from the perspective of an Ultmer in the city of Breville. When most people are on the brink of fate while in the depths of their unconscious mind, their body is on high alert and pulls their being from the dangerous scenario. Today's quest titled, Through a Nightmare Darkly, tackles the topic of a person's dreams being one of the most dangerous places they can venture into, and that perhaps nowhere is safe from the influence of the Daedric Gods, even in one's own mind. It also delves into the idea that when you die in your sleep, you die in the world of Nern. While the player is wandering through the city of Breville, and perhaps even carrying out tasks for the Mages Guild, they may hear word of an Argonian spellsword at the Guild Hall named Kude. The rumors around town simply tell the player that she is offered a reward for someone to locate her missing friend. However, nobody has seemed to take her up on it. Intrigued by this notion, the player can decide to head for the Faction Hall to look into the matter for themselves. Entering into the hall and tracking down Kude, she will have this to say on the disappearance of her friend. I don't suppose you could help me locate my friend Henantir, could you? I miss him so. We were study mates at the Arcane University, and we've come to grow fond of each other over the years. He's always getting himself into jams with the careless ways he performs his experiments. And, well, I'm afraid he's done it again. I'm going to level with you as you seem like you wish to help. Henantir isn't missing. On the contrary, I know exactly where he is. The problem is he's trapped and there's no way I can free him. Well, Henantir's been warned that if he strays outside the guild rules one more time, he may be up for summary dismissal. The rules say that he isn't to practice dangerous experiments at his home. It must be done in the guild under the watchful eye of an associate. Henantir's never been one for rules, and so he's continued to perform his latest experiments in secret. If word gets out, He'll be dismissed. Great. Whatever suits you and gets me Henantir back suits me just fine. When you're ready to go and see him, let me know. But please, do hurry. It seems as though she has known this friend for quite some time as they have studied in the Imperial City together. Her friend, Henantir, is in fact not missing at all as she knows exactly where he is. He has a record for performing careless and dangerous experiments on his own that have gotten him reprimanded by the guild before. It appears that this particular magical stunt is the straw that broke the camel's back and Henantir could be in real danger. If the player agrees and is ready to help Kude with Henantir, this dialogue will ensue. Are you ready to follow me to Henantir? Fantastic. Let's be off then. Kude now begins to lead the player through town to Henantir's house. At this point, it makes sense that whatever magical trap he has put himself into has been conjured at his home as that is where Kude said most of his work is done. Kude and the player will enter into the house and the two of you will head into his bedroom upstairs. Interestingly, it simply appears that Henantir is asleep in his bed and there's nothing more to it. But this is when Kude talks to the player and offers more information. Well, as you can see, Henantir's right here, and he's trapped in his dream world. I told him that trying to travel into one's own dreams is risky, 
but as usual, he didn't listen to me, always has to do things his way. Henentir constructed a magical device he called the Dream World Amulet. With this device, one can enter his own mind and experience dreams. True, but this is different. When you enter your dreams with the amulet, you're in full command of a dreamlike replica of yourself. All your thoughts, your skills, and your talents travel there with you. Think of it as exploring a new land, but a land within your own mind. Henentir created the amulet to see if he could use his dreams as a training ground to help better himself. I don't know all of the details, but the amulet is a conduit to get to that training ground. It's been three days, and he's been stuck in his dreams. I've watched him all that time, and he hasn't been up at all. The only way to save him is to put on the dream world amulet and go to sleep. Only then can you hopefully find out what's happened in there. I fear that anyone he knows won't be able to help him in there. Since I'm in his memories, he may dismiss me as a figment of his dreams. The only chance is for a total stranger to enter his dreams. When you're ready to do this, I'll give you the amulet. Only I know the secret way it can be removed from his neck. My poor Henandir, I shudder to think what's happened to him in there. You'll have to be very careful in there. If Henandir intended it as a training ground, there's no telling what you may encounter. Are you prepared to enter the dream world? Please, use the extra bed here. If you sleep too far from Henentir, it may not work. I'll watch over you both to make sure you're safe. Oh my, I almost forgot. Henentir once told me that if he's killed in his dreams, anyone that's in there with him will die as well. So do be careful. The player has just received a lot of information from Kude on the status of Henentir. Henentir decided his next magical experiment would be surrounding the Dream World. He has constructed an enchanted device called the Dream World Amulet. While sleeping with this necklace equipped, he can have lucid dreams and be totally in control of his thoughts, talents, and skills. Moreover, with the use of this amulet, he can conduct even more experiments and training sessions within his personal and unsupervised realm. However, Kude has informed us that Henetir has been inside the dream world for over three days, and there's apparently no way to wake him up from the outside world. The only way to potentially pull him out of this cognitive landscape is for someone else to equip the dream world amulet and delve into his unconscious mind. Kude fears that if she were to be the one to enter into the dream world with him, he would simply dismiss her as a memory. However, if the player is the one to enter into it, it would stand to reason that Henentir might believe we are there to help him escape. She also mentions that she is the only one who knows the specific way the amulet is to be removed from the wearer's neck, further showing that it has to be us to be the ones to enter into his dream world. Finally, she mentions that we should be prepared for any dark and horrific things that lay ahead in the recesses of his mind, but most importantly, if Henentir dies in the dream world when we're in there with him, we will die as well. With all of this in mind, the player puts on the dream world amulet, heads to the spare bed near Henentir, lays down, and falls asleep. It is here that you are transported into the dream world and are immediately confronted by Henentir himself. I've lost my way. This place looks so familiar, but I can't remember how I got here. Can you help me? This place is so strange. Dream world, you say? It's more like a nightmare. I don't like this place at all. I feel like I shouldn't be here. There must be an exit around here somewhere. I'd explore this place, but I'm afraid I just don't have the courage to do so. How could I be so careless? What's the matter with me? I know I've lost something. Yes, that's it. 
I, I've lost many things in this strange place. Would you please help me? Henentir appears to be just as confused on the whole matter as Kude and the player. He is disoriented, dazed, and expresses fear that the dream world isn't what he thought. He exclaims that he feels like he's missing parts of himself that are integral to his being. Looking around the dream world, we appear to be in a malformed version of his bedroom, but everything also feels off. The aroma and world tint is a sinister red, nothing from our inventory has been transported over, and there are missing key components from the room. In their place, new and intricate doorways and portals have been added from different settings across Cyrodiil. Through observations and looking around, it appears that there are four trials the player must go through in order to rescue Henetir, as well as themselves from this nightmare world. In total, there are four tests located throughout the house. The tests are that of perception, resolve, courage, and patience. By completing all of these tests, it may have an effect on Henentir regaining those aspects of him which he seems to have lost in this distorted reality. The trials can be done in any order, however, the first trial we'll talk about today is Perception. It is located near Henentir in the upstairs bedroom. By going through the magical doorway which looks similar in nature to an alien ruin, it will transport the player to a dark, spacious area with a strange and intricate pathway leading into the darkness. Beside you, in a container, there is a single torch which can be used to guide your way along the ruinous pathway. The player will encounter several varieties of traps during their ominous adventure. These traps will see to the player's harm and downfall with the use of moving blades, pressure plates, and crumbling stones dropping the player into the abyss. Through a lengthy and perilous journey along the dangerous walkway, at the very end, you will encounter a blue shrouded sigil stone-like object which is titled Element of Perception. By picking it up, the player is immediately teleported back to the room with Henentir with a journal update explaining that if all the elements are found, you both might be able to escape this nightmare. In the very same room, there happens to be another doorway. This one has the look of a wooden doorway that one might find down deep in a mine or cave network across Cyrodiil. This door is titled Test of Patience. Entering through, the player will be teleported to another dark and spacious area that is identical to the world where Henentir's perception was. However, the layout of stonework and the pathway is different. Near the player, in another container, there is a note titled Mysterious Scroll. Upon reading, it appears to be some strange amalgamation of Daedric runes, but nothing that makes sense. Continuing forward, the player will come across a section of the pathway that is littered with pressure plates. Stepping onto one might see the player shot at with darts coming from the traps on the sides of the walkway, ultimately ending with the player's death. It is here that the player is supposed to clue in that the Daedric runes found on the mysterious scroll correspond to the pressure plates on the ground. There are three areas of traps that the player encounters, and all of them utilize different pathways laid out by differing Daedric runes. The first rune is Ayam, or A, which sees the player going in a fairly straight line with one deviation to the left. This is the smallest section of traps with it being a 4x4 grid. The second rune is Met, or M, which sees the player traversing in a more intricate maneuvering style across the traps. This section is the second biggest, with it being a 6x6 grid. The final rune is Quam, or Q, which sees an even more intricate and complicated pathway across the largest trap area, which is an 8x8 grid. Finally, once all of the puzzles have been completed, at the very end, another sigil stone-like object called Element of Patience can be obtained, which transports the player back to Henentir once more. It is now that the player has a firm grasp on what they must accomplish in order to flee from this malicious reality. With each moment passing, Henentir appears to become more and more concerned with finding a way out as quickly as possible. The next area of the house leads you downstairs. Everything down here seems disoriented and out of place, similar to upstairs with pictures being flipped upside down, and the walls and decor are completely different too. 
you're met with a corridor that has two pathways leading to two separate doorways. There is food on the surrounding tables and several potions stuffed in a cabinet in the back room if the player finds themselves low on health. Choosing to go down the back pathway first, the sight of a grand, noble wooden door meets your eye. However, so do the sprayed bloodstains on the ground and door, as well as the decomposed skeleton laying on the table next to it. This doorway is titled, The Test of Resolve. Entering through, the player is transported to what feels like a familiar sight. The hallway appears to be the same one that leads from the bloodworks to the pit in the Imperial City Arena. There is yet another container that this time actually contains leveled weapons and armor for the player to take. Given that the Dream World always provides you with what you need for an upcoming trial, you equip the necessary items with a sneaking suspicion that you will need to use them on whatever lays at the top of this hallway. Suited up and weapon at the ready, the player cautiously marches up the corridor to reveal an identical setting to the arena with some added elements around the pit itself. More concerning, though, is the two gigantic and aggressive minotaurs staring you down from opposite sides of the deadly stadium, one on the left and one on the right. Even for intermediate level players, minotaurs are a serious threat and a formidable foe. The player cuts, slashes, hacks, saws, and casts away at the brutish creatures, with every blow on you being absorbed by your ever-weakening armor. With a mix of your fighting skills and some luck, the player bests both minotaurs. It is here that a stone stairway raises up from the ground, creating a walkway up into the stands where the player is able to obtain the third element, that of resolve. Brought back to Henentir's room, the player remains hopeful and thinks to themselves that there is only one more test left. Running back downstairs, the last doorway to the final trial is on the right hand side. It consists of a short, narrow hallway that leads to a rustic, simple wooden plank door. The title of this door is The Test of Courage. Entering through, the player is transported into a cave-like setting with water breaching through the floor. Looking around, you will notice yet another container on the high ground which contains a single potion that allows water breathing for 30 seconds. At the end of the room, there is a little nook that leads downwards to the depths of the cavern only it is completely submerged in water. It is here that the player must be tactful and swim blindly to wherever the trial is leading you. As an Argonian, this test will come as fairly easy, but any other race will have a tricky time partaking in it. The player will begin swimming forward as it is a straight path across. After a few seconds, they will end up in a tall, narrow area which then requires you to swim downwards. At the bottom, there will be yet another container which has a second potion of water breathing. Drinking it and traversing the only path laid out, the player will soon find themselves at what appears to be a trap door which is titled, Wood Door to Grotto of Courage. The player is now led to what looks like the outside of a fort with the ruins surrounding you. Most importantly, in the middle of the area is the final object the player needs to obtain, Henentir's Element of Courage. After grabbing it, you are teleported for the final time to Henentir's Dream World room, and it's now that you speak with Henentir in hopes to escape this twisted reality. Please, I feel as though I'll be trapped here forever, and I don't even know why. But how? What you say must be the truth. I feel strange. I can see now what you were saying was no story at all, but the truth, and I'm a fool. I had no idea that the amulet could hold such a power over me. I set out to create a way to conquer my failings, but it seems the tables had turned, and they conquered me. I don't know how you did it, but I thank you. Now, we must wake from this dream and take our places in the real world again. Farewell. It is here that Henentir is finally able to regain the four pieces of himself that he had seemed to be missing while in the dream world. He snaps out of his confused and disoriented being to take control over his mind once more. He is able to now pull both himself and the player out of the dream world and back into reality. When returned to his home in Breville, he has this to say to the player. It's good to see you in the real world. I'm indebted to you for rescuing me from my nightmare. I suppose thanks are only a small token of my appreciation. 
Allow me to reward you for your bravery. I'm afraid I don't have much in the way of coin, but allow me to present you with something that may help in your travels. The player has successfully rescued Henentir from his magical experiment, received the rewards which have been promised to you, Kude can finally rest easy knowing once again her dear friend wasn't killed, or worse, expelled from the university, and yet, another quest was taken care of by the hero of Kavaj. The question I have after completing this quest is what exactly is this area called the Dream World? Obviously, it's just a place where one's mind wanders off to when they sleep, aka simply just dreaming, but it seems more complex than a simple figment of our unconscious imaginations. With some previous dialogue from Kude, it appears that everyone's dream world is personalized as she referred to Henentiers as his dream world and not the dream world. She also mentions that dying in this world would result in the dreamer's death within the physical world of Nern, showcasing that an adventure to this area isn't to be taken lightly. This also implies that Kude may know more to this question on the dream world than we do, however, no more in-game information can be provided to the player. In fact, it seems like the dream world is hardly talked about on any external forums and wikis within the universe. However, there is a quest not far off from Through a Nightmare Darkly that almost mirrors the quest's events to the T. The only difference is that while we don't necessarily sleep to go inside this individual's dream world, it appears that his twisted and dark mind has casted a sinister visual from within the occupied fort. Covered in the very first video ever on this channel, we discussed the wizard Arkved being forever trapped in his nightmares due to him crossing the Daedric Prince Vermina. In short, Arkved stole an artifact known as the Orb of Vermina from the dreams of one of Vermina's followers, pulling it into the waking world and has since kept it locked away in his tower. The player is tasked with going to this tower and retrieving the orb. While there, we make our way through several horrific and disturbing scenes that are actually projections from Arkved's own dreams. Eventually, the orb is secured and Arkved is found in a state exactly how we found Henentir, rolling around in bed, trapped, tormented, and unable to wake up. Discovered through some notes is that this was actually the doing of Vermina due to Arkved trying to master his dreams and in turn, weaken Vermina's hold over him in her Daedric realm of Quagmire. According to the lore, Arkved could have possessed the ability to be a dreamwalker, which allows him to be able to cast a simple spell in order to enter into the dreams of others. Most dreamwalkers have been recorded to do good and noble deeds, helping those who have truly been tormented by the images and audibles of Quagmire. While Vermina wouldn't appreciate those motives of dreamwalkers, a thief stealing one of her prized artifacts in order to gain more power in her realm would likely take precedence for further punishment. In the case of Henentir, he likely crossed the same line that Arkved did by creating a magical amulet that allows him to control his dreams. Vermina would have every reason to try and sabotage Henentir's work, as if the amulet had worked, she would hold less dominion over one's dream world. Since this can also be seen as an act of relinquishing control and power from what is likely the Daedric realm of Quagmire, Vermina cursed Henentir to the same fate that Arkved was cursed to, to lie asleep, tormented, and trapped and haunted by the Daedric Prince for the rest of eternity. It is only through the care of Kude and the actions of the hero that Henentir was able to be saved from the dream world. Interesting too is that the four elements that the player must obtain in the dream world come in the same design as sigil stones. Sigil stones are what the player must pull and deactivate in order to escape Merun's Dagon's Deadlands throughout the main quest. In a similar fashion, through a Nightmare Darkly sees the player pulling and obtaining these sigil stone lookalikes, resulting in an exit from the realm. Perhaps this can be seen as another testament to the idea that Henentir in fact ventured into the realm of Quagmire. So, perhaps it is very likely that Henentir angered Vermina and received the same treatment that Arkved did. An interesting theory is that perhaps using the Dreamworld amulet, which is removed from you after the quest is done, the player would have been able to lie asleep near Arkved, even though there is no extra bed, and perhaps rescue him too from the grips of Vermina. Although, it seems like his punishment might be a little more deserving than that of Henentir's. 
The interesting part, however, is how come Arkved's tower was restructured to look like the dream world, yet the player didn't need to sleep in order to experience it. One theory is that since the powerful artifact of Vermina's orb lies in the tower, she is able to exhibit a large amount of control and influence over that immediate area, given her connection to said orb. Another theory is that perhaps if given more time being stuck in the dream world, Henentir's house would have started to transform into what we see within his dream world, similar to how Arkved's tower transforms into what he sees in his dream world. We know that Henentir has only been trapped for three days through the dialogue with Kude, but we don't really know how long Arkved has been trapped for. If Arkved has been there for a couple of weeks to a month, then maybe the theory stands that if time was actually accounted for in the quests, the same structural transformation would have happened within Henentir's home. Overall, Through a Nightmare Darkly is a very fascinating and interesting quest to partake in. The player is sent to another realm of sorts, and very little background is given towards it. It could be a sector of the Dajic realm of Quagmire, or it could be its entirely own thing. Maybe Vermina had a lot of influence with Henentir being trapped, maybe she had none at all. This could be directly related to Arkved's curse, or the two instances are not related. This is where I would like to open the floor up to your opinions. What are your beliefs on the dream world and could it all be related to Vermina and her influences over the dreams of mortals? Until next time, keep on adventuring.